only the part, the, the wire all the way through the gun is not electrified. Just from this point to the weld. That's the only part that this little bit of wire is electrified. Alright, um, anything else? You got different types of welds. Um, the most common are butt joints, corner joints, and T joints. Uh, edge joints and lap joints, you few and far between, but they're really nice when you need them. Um, the standard really for anything is just a T joint. You put two things together on a T and you weld one or both sides. Um, you want to elaborate, push, pull, any of that fun stuff? Or? Uh, you can go so far in depth on this stuff that we have, we I won't have enough time in a month to do everything. But there's different types of welding. You can push the wire, which means you're pushing it into the fresh material. Then you can pull it. Which so you can, you can push across of... the weld, or you can pull across the weld. And each one does different things depending. We're not going to go into that because for most of the stuff, I'm, we're just doing this as a general course. You, got, you broke a hitch on your trailer for your, your car, or you have a little project you just need to weld together. Like this, we welded this. I think it's this one. It's one of these wire chairs. We welded one of these together. All right, just just generic, basic welds to get a good good weld that's strong. It's going to hold. You don't have to lay huge long beads. Um, Mike, you want to go into super duper safety? All right, grounding and stuff like that. <coughs> grounding is well, the machine won't work without proper ground. If when you go to strike an arc, if it doesn't work, it's the grounding issue, or it's not. Completing the circuit somewhere between the two points. Uh, this is the most common type of helmet you'll come across. This is a fixed shape with a flip up lens. You can also get the fixed shape with the stationary lens where you got to lift the helmet up to see anything. Yeah, you uh, I'll turn sure. the lights on. Uh, basically, you don't wear one of these, you get sunburn on your eyeballs and it hurts like hell. Uh, Love or slap. Yeah. Because welding creates a lot of uh, really intense UV light, and it's just, it, it's all bad. You can get sunburns from it from welding for five minutes. So do your collar. These are your welding gloves, which these are heavier than what most will wear. These are more designed for stick, but they work well to protect your hands on any type of welding. These are your sleeves to keep your clothing from catching fire. Apron, um, notice I'm wearing denim pants. Uh, glad most everyone did those. Those are cotton to work. Um, the only thing you want to stray away from safety wise in clothing is nylon uh, because it melts and doesn't burn. Cotton burns, you can get it out, you know, it goes out pretty quickly. Nylon, polyester, any synthetic material will melt and then burn into your skin and you, it, you know, just, you can't really just brush it off. Um, you have a chip hammer. These, this is a chip hammer. With this MIG, this is a, it's called a flux core. It has a, a material inside the middle of the wire that acts as a shielding material. To prevent the oxidation, because this does not have a gas bottle to shield from oxidation. The two welders we... Just out of curiosity, what's the gas that's the shielding uh, gas? Argon, CO2, or... So it's any inert uh, gas? Basically, basically, any inert gas. Yes. All right, just wondering. Anything except flammable materials, basically. So, so you need to secure oxygen? Helium is actually a uh, welding gas you can purchase. It's used uh, mainly for, I believe it's uh, titanium oh, and They're beginning steel. to stop doing that though because helium's in a shortage. Yes. Anyway. <laughs> it is expensive. It uh, with a flux core welder like this, they're usually cheaper. I mean, you can get in the welding for with this unit for under, what, 200 bucks? Yeah. Um, the problem is, as the, the flux material is injected into the weld as it melts and it floats to the top to protect the air barrier, to keep oxidation from happening, and you have to chip it off if you want to add more weld to it. Plus the uh, flux material rusts really bad. Um, and you just use a regular, this is just a standard $3 welding chip hammer, you just chip it off when you're done and just place off and that's about it. Alright, so these are some of the tools you can use. These are angle magnets for when you're trying to get 90s or 45 set up and welder. These come in handy. These are just a pair of MIG pliers. What they are is designed to be able to work on the, the hot parts of the gun. And, uh, slag builds up on the inside of the contact tip. Slag, yeah. slag is just excess material that has flown off the weld and stuck everywhere except where it's supposed to go. And that's basically it. C-clamps, C-clamps, C-clamps. You're going to get in the welding. Just, just 
five boxes of sequences. All right. Um, super duper. I'm turning off the lights again if you're using that. I'm just time. going through real quick. I had to. I had to show the breakdown a little. Well. Um, you want to show show a mix setup or that is a take setup. setup, but I uh, take setup six. Okay. Way oh. too oh. Okay. That's fine. Um, we're just going to give everybody a quick, uh, we're going to do a, the butt joint and the T joint, which is your two standard joints, out of some basic mild steel. Uh, we can take two people one at a time, we've got two of the welders set up right now. Um, you will have to don protective apparel. Uh, one person gets a nice, awesome apron and the other person gets a nice welding jacket. Um, who volunteers? Who wants to go first? I was going to have you teach me. <laughs> <laughs> well, Come so on, you brought a welder. What? It's so fun, can you blame him? Okay.